What if I told you that China, the world's most populous country and largest consumer of energy, is facing an energy crisis of epic proportions? With an expanding economy and growing population, China's power demands are growing at an unprecedented rate. China's energy demands have been growing at an alarming rate, and the government has been taking significant steps to address the issue. But the question remains, will these efforts be enough to prevent a looming energy catastrophe? Stay with us till the end of the video to find out. China has a huge appetite for energy. About a quarter of the world's energy is consumed in this nation annually, 35% higher than in the US. Since the year 2000, its energy requirements have more than tripled. Amazing growth has been fueled in part by that consumption, but at a price. The biggest emitter of greenhouse gases worldwide is China. In order to combat climate change, China must reduce its emissions to net zero, which is obviously difficult to achieve. The nation's reliance on fossil fuels hinders both its own development and the welfare of its people. China lacks energy security. It imports a lot of products, including petrol and oil. It has a long-standing issue with pollution, and it frequently experiences power outages that seriously impair industry. The world's largest polluter has started moving towards a fundamental makeover as a result of all this. By 2060, President Xi Jinping wants China to be carbon neutral. According to the President of China, COVID-19 serves as a reminder that the human race needs to accelerate the green revolution and develop greener methods of development. China's long-term plans are for its carbon emissions to peak within the next 10 years. Then, by 2060, it will reach net zero. That gives it around 40 years to accomplish something that no other country has done let alone somewhere like the size of China. China is establishing itself as a leader in clean energy as the rest of the world begins to move away from fossil fuels. In addition to modernizing its own energy infrastructure, China is also developing a supply network that may uncomfortably make China the world's sole source of energy in the future. China's influence has grown significantly. Therefore, it starts with the processing, continues with the production, and ends with your electric vehicles and battery packs. The West will need to be a little inventive in how they approach it. What China does by 2030 may dictate how the world's energy grid will look in the future. China was in the midst of an economic revolution at the end of the 20th century. Its GDP was barely 6% than that of the US in 1990 and only 34% of its energy was used. However, the economic reforms of the 1980s and 1990s began the process of opening up to commerce with the rest of the world and privatizing industries. China was well on its way to becoming the world's factory by the time it joined the World Trade Organization in 2001, and it had rising energy demands to match. It has a tremendously dramatic past, I believe that China is undergoing an industrial revolution despite the condensation, a hundred years after that, all of that in a very concentrated period of time. Since there were power shortages in the early years and the system was still functioning, what we observed is a clearly substantial change in energy consumption. China was coping through trying. There was no doubt about what carbon was doing when the other countries were using it. That drastically altered between 2008 and 2009, and it goes along with a concern for air pollution now. Beijing is experiencing yet another day of haze. According to some environmentalists, the air quality is the worst ever there. For almost a decade, Beijing was infamously the most filthy city on earth. China made the commitment to enhance the use of renewable energy starting around 2010. Additionally, it became abundantly evident to its leadership that such growth would not be sustainable due to the fact that it would require a significant amount of imported fossil fuels, such as oil and natural gas, in addition to the fact that it would produce a lot of emissions and China wished to distance itself from that. Like many other countries, China initially faced very uncompetitive economics for solar and wind projects that made it difficult to subsidize the production of the essential parts and guarantee that the power they sell is priced competitively. China has excelled in each of these areas where you create the market, and then you can relax some of the regulatory requirements because it now just makes sound financial sense. 
In recent years, there have been record numbers of new wind and solar installations worldwide, thanks in large part to China's expenditures in renewable energy. More than 10% of the electricity used worldwide in 2016 was produced by wind and solar energy. Even still, the proportion of renewable energy in China's current energy mix is minuscule. At the moment, China is heavily dependent on fossil fuels and within that, if you look at the production of electricity, coal makes up around 60% of it, whereas solar, wind and biomass still make up a very, very small pollution. There was pressure building on China that they need to manage their needs to cut emissions and sort of came together at the Paris Agreement in 2015, when China agreed to sign it alongside the US and pretty much every other nation on Earth. The next step, when China stated it would set a net zero objective in 2020, was made possible because of that diplomatic maneuver. And in a way, China pulled off a coup because it established that objective before the US could. As part of China's decarbonisation strategy, fossil fuel emissions will rise steadily over the next few years before reaching a peak in 2030. With 80% of energy coming from carbon-free sources by 2060, they have given themselves another three decades to reach net zero. It will take a significant effort to get there, and it begins with renewable megaprojects on a scale never before seen on Earth. We went on a reporting trip to Western China's Qinghai in late 2021. It's very windswept. The climate is very sunny there and very little density of people. We saw a complex that was roughly the size of Singapore and covered 600 square kilometers. They have a hydro dam, a sizable solar development, and they're adding wind installations to that facility. Nearly 20 gigawatts of electricity will be produced once everything is operational. China intends to have enough wind and solar energy capacity by 2030, which is up to 1.2 terawatts that can provide all of the US's current electrical needs. Well, it isn't sufficient to simply produce that electricity though. Power distribution is a massive undertaking in and of itself. China has essentially constructed this enormous network of extremely high voltage power lines to transport all that electricity. Additionally, they are made to transport all of this energy from the west to the urban and industrial hubs in the east, where it is most needed. What these cables do is lessen the waste that could occur when transporting this electricity. These cables are only in use in China and Brazil, which are the only two countries in the world. China's leadership is aware that it will not be able to achieve its net zero target without having what is referred to as firm clean electricity. The idea behind reliable clean power is that you can produce carbon free electricity whenever you need it, rather than depending on the weather. China's power needs are expected to continue to grow in the future due to the country's rapid economic development and population growth. While China has made significant investments in renewable energy sources such as wind, solar and hydroelectric power, it still heavily relies on coal as a primary source of energy. Failure to address China's power needs in a sustainable manner could have devastating consequences for both the environment and public health. The continued reliance on coal could lead to a rise in air pollution related illnesses such as respiratory disease, heart disease and cancer, which can have significant social and economic costs. Climate change caused by greenhouse gas emissions could also have catastrophic impacts, including sea level rise, more frequent and intense natural disasters and food and water scarcity. Therefore, it is crucial for China to prioritize sustainable energy development and transition to a low carbon economy to mitigate these risks and ensure a livable future for its citizens. China's power needs present both opportunities and challenges for the country's future. As we look ahead to the future, it's clear that the decisions we make today will have a significant impact on our planet's health and our quality of life for generations to come. What do you think? Can China accomplish the targeted goals for the betterment of its nation? Let us know in the comments section below. Like, share and subscribe for more informative content. Thanks for watching.